Well, I'm back with another episode of Sci-Fi Mats. Yes, I wasn't dead. I was busy doing stuff like Bodo Plats and Nyquist Plats and Rude Loki and other really interesting things. Anyways, to get back to the subject at hand, the survival mode beta has been released on Steam, so if you like it hardcore, it doesn't get much more hardcore than this. Fast traveling has been disabled, only sleeping saves your game, and you got about as much health as a bag of peanuts. Wasteland Workshop has also been released, adding some new building supplies, neon signs, and some cages to set up your very own small skill battles, which might be useful if you're on console, I guess. Anyways, that was it for the Fallout 4 updates, so let's get on to the mods. Coming in at number 5 this week, it's Nuka Gear, so this mod adds in Nuka Gear. Nuka Cola promotional material, yes, you can now be the embodiment of everybody's favorite fictional beverage. So obviously the Nuka suits are made for female characters, but the mod thought it was nice enough to let male characters wear them as well. So there's 5 different suits, the standard white one, 2077, which has a nice shade of brown, reminiscent of the color of a nice cold glass of Nuka Cola on a Sunday morning. Cherry, which comes in red, I don't know, nobody likes Nuka Cola cherry, so I wouldn't wear this one, you're probably gonna make some enemies wearing this one. Quantum, of course, comes in a nice shade of blue, and finally, we've got a very special vault edition, for those that are feeling homesick. So yeah, not only does this mod allow you to show off your bulge, as well as your rocking abs, it also gives you access to the Nuka Blaster. It's based off of the Alien Blaster, but it shoots a red energy blast, and when you reload it, you open up a little bottle cap. And to top it off, you get access to three Nuka Tops. Quantum for blue flames, cherry for pinkish flames, and uh, just play Nuka Cola for flamey looking flames. So obviously this is not a very serious mod, but it is pretty interesting. At number 4 we've got Automatron Securitron. That just rolls right up the tongue. So this adds the Securitron from Fallout New Vegas to Fallout 4. If you've got the Automatron DLC, you can now craft your very own Securitron. Just perfect for when you want to pretend to be Mr. House. Now you can decide what face you get, so you can put your favorite faction's insignia on there, your own face, Vault Boy, or the Yes Man face. You can also decide what arms he gets, you can even make him into a robot Frankenstein if you're not a fan of the secure drum wheels for example. Overall a pretty nifty mod. Mine didn't really last that long though, but he was still smiling upon death, so that's something. Then I nearly blew up. At number 3 we've got Dark Metal. So in my battles I found out that a dog is better than a cat, but what's better than a dog? Yes, a robot dog. And what's better than one robot dog? Three robot dogs. So this mod spawns in three robot dogs that will follow you around like companions. And if that wasn't good enough, you can also craft armor for them to make your very own custom pack of robot guard dogs. They don't look very cute, but at least they're ferocious. You can also decide to turn dog meat into a robot version. Robot dog meat, I guess. Also, I still had Ringo the Flamingo installed, so my robot dogs were half robot, half flamingo. At least occasionally they made flamingo sounds, which was uh, pretty weird. But if you're looking for some new companions, uh, this might be the mod for you. The second place goes to Modular Simonov PTRS-41 Anti-Tank Rifle, that again is a mouthful. So this is a Soviet World War II semi-automatic anti-tank rifle, which basically means it's just badass. If something is good enough to take out a tank, it's definitely good enough to take out a super mutant's head. It fires the 14.5mm round and it's pretty customizable. You can go for plain long, tactical long, or you can attach your freaking Helbert head to this gigantic barrel. If that's a bit too much for you, you can also attach the Helbert head to a uh, smaller barrel. So this thing is pretty badass, it sounds incredibly powerful and the reloading animation is on point. It makes pretty short work of death claws. And if that doesn't do it for you, you can also stab Brahmin with his Helbert head. I'm pretty sure this thing can take out a ship. So if you think the vanilla hunting rifle isn't powerful enough and you're not a big fan of the Barrett 50 kill I've shown up before, then you've probably found your new go-to sniper rifle. Coming in at number 1 this week, it's Campsite Simple Wasteland Camping and HD Sleeping Bags. So I've shown off a sleeping bag mod before, and then also a campsite mod which included a sleeping bag. This is pretty much the same mod again, but even better. It is really, really well done. So like the other mod, it allows you to craft your camping supplies at a chemistry station. So I took my camping supplies to an abandoned cemetery, because where else would you decide to camp for the night? Anyways, to use the camping supplies, you simply go to your mistap and drop them on the floor. These supplies include a cloth wall for when you want some privacy, a makeshift tent for when you want some quick shelter, a two sleeping bag pull tent for when you've got company over, just a plain sleeping bag in case you're a stargazer, a single sleeping bag pull tent if you just hate stars, a lantern, I don't think I really have to explain what a lantern does, a folding chair if you just want to sit comfortably without getting grass stains all over your pants, and a campfire to keep you warm. Now you can also attach a cooking pot to this campfire in case you want to do some cooking, then a GPS beacon so your campsite is marked on your map and you can fast travel to it, 
And finally, a DAG bed for your DAG, or robot DAG, or pet flamingo DAG. I mean, it really depends on what mod you got installed. If that's not good enough for you, you can also pick up your lantern and hang it inside your tent, and then go to sleep. Unfortunately, your campfire does have a limited lifespan, so when you wake up, it uh, is probably not burning anymore, which means you can't cook on it anymore. Although, you can still warm your hands on it, which is uh, kind of weird. Now, if you don't like the placement of some of these supplies, you can also move them using a little menu. And finally, there's also different color variations, which you unlock after you find the camping book in Sanctuary. I sort of didn't really pick up that thing, mainly because I didn't want to see Preston. Whenever I see him, he always keeps yammering on about the settlements I gotta save. I just ignore him these days. I ignore his phone calls. But yeah, overall, a really well done mod. As I mentioned in the intro, the survival mode is out now. I haven't tried it yet, but I considered starting a new playthrough. Now, on survival mode, as I mentioned, only sleeping allows you to save your game, so you really have to plan ahead. To save your game, you're gonna have to find random beds. Now, I'm not sure whether or not I'm gonna be a big fan of that. Mods are disabled by default, though, but using the power of mods, you can re-enable mods. So if I do decide to go for that playthrough, I might use this mod to save outside of combat to make things just a tad bit easier on me. Don't judge me, I got limited time, okay? Anyhow, we also got a bonus mod this week, it's Gorilla Armor. So yeah, this mod allows you to put on a gorilla suit. There is not a lot more to say about that. It also adds in Gorilla Power Armor parts to turn your power armor into another gorilla suit. So now you can wear an additional gorilla suit over your gorilla suit. The combination of the two gorilla suit provides just enough protection for when you piss out the entirety of Diamond City for killing one of these hobos that uh, sort of uses a blowtorch on your power armor without permission. Yeah. And with that was it for this week's mass. I should be back every week for the next few weeks at least, uh, because I shouldn't be awfully busy, but uh, we'll see I suppose. Until next week. So yeah, honestly, I, I don't have a lot to talk about right here, you know, mostly I just ramble on about things for no particular reason whatsoever, but I really haven't done all that much over the last uh, few weeks. I mean, I, I did some midterms, that was pretty interesting, right? As I mentioned, Bodhi plots, Nyquist plots, um, Root Loci, yeah, Frequency Responses, uh, RLC Circuits, yeah, Op Amp Circuits as well, Transfer Functions, a lot of Transfer Functions. Let's see, what else? Oh yeah, Numerical Mathematics, that too, that was, uh, that was very interesting floating point errors, truly, but uh, yeah, enough about that, until next time, also click the video in the bottom left corner and subscribe of course, if you enjoy me rambling on about things you should definitely subscribe to this channel, every week just high quality content, 